Well, the spark way back when, I can't tell you it was about, ooh, I love kids, because that's everybody's answer. It was something different. It was just a calling. And I fought the calling, but it kept calling. So I answered it, and I love English, so that's why. And to be honest, kids like her are reasons I continue to stay doing what I do, because I truly do, do like working with the young adults. After I graduate from H.L. Bourgeois, um, I plan to go to Nichols to uh, get a degree in journalism through the mass communication department. I would I'd probably be a journalist, obviously, being in journalism, but it could be behind the camera um, or just writing for the public. I think writing takes a lot of the problems in the world and it brings it to light. Isabella is a caring young lady. She um, relies heavily upon her faith, and I think it's you know phenomenal that she can stand by that in a high school public setting um, when it's not popular for everyone. She has a determination, she has a work ethic. She's also very like a mama in the classroom. If something's not happening or moving fast enough, she's like, okay, let's go. You know, always getting me to um, redirect or whatever, but she, she's just special. I think I'm motivated to do well in school because I see how other situations have taken people down the wrong path or just not, they, they don't do well. And I feel like I have to push myself to be the best that I can be because I, I don't really want to like have a bad future for myself. And I believe that the way I was raised has really helped that. Um, my parents have always pushed me to do what's best and obviously through my faith I'm trying to do the best for not only myself but everybody else. Her family went through some obstacles after Hurricane Ida, um, you know, with home problems, etc. And so they've been having to live out of a trailer for quite some time and she really hasn't let that slow her down. I mean, we'll talk about it, but as far as her performance and her personality, she doesn't miss a beat. And I think it's because of her faith that she holds on to. Just a phenomenal young lady. Funny thing is, my uncle was a student of hers. And so uh, I definitely heard about that the first day of school. Hey, I taught your uncle. I'm getting old. Oh man, I need to retire. <laughs> oh man, I honestly thought on the first day of school, uh, my junior year, when I first had her, I was thinking that it was, it was seven o'clock in the morning. I thought that it was crazy because she was really hyper. <laughs> Obviously she's gonna be excited because it's the first day of school, but she did a really good job trying to get to know her students. And then I think maybe the second day or like the third day, we dove straight into everything and she just made everything really fun. She's just so bubbly and no matter what I ask her to do, she does it. So we had an activity and I had shared a picture with you of her with a beard on um, for the Canterbury Tales and we brought the characters to life and she pulled this character, the Miller, and she's like, how am I gonna do that? I said, you will figure it out. And so she came in here with a beard and her little flute and her um, garb to put on and she really did an outstanding job with that. I chose Miss Overly as my inspirational educator because she has stood out among all of my teachers. She has not only obviously taught the kids, but she's made everybody think deeper into like, not only like the surface meaning, but what we can truly learn from everything. And she sparks creativity in everybody. I, I see people that like, don't put effort into things and then they, they just shine through other things that we have to do in class. I have an athletic world and I have an educational world, so I would have to say Coach Albert really inspired me. As far as the coach and the teacher in him, seeing how he pulled it all together, I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't think he slept. There's no way he could have slept. Um, so he was a big inspiration for me. And then I would have to say in the academic world, um, Arlene Domingue and Diana Galliano in the English world brought my love of English to the forefront, and I still use some of the activities we did back in the day, you know, from them. She's becoming more 
not so much of a teacher, but like a mentor, and she can be considered like a really great person. <laughs>